Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing a big watch that is a big deal. One of the most sophisticated travel watches ever devised by any brand at any price. This is the Breguet Horamundi 5717BR in rose gold. You can see this extraordinary guilloche and lacquer dial dual time watch and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for the Breguet Aura Monday with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this extraordinary mechanical memory dual time watch. The model debuted at Buzzworld 2011 and several variants featuring several geographic proximities are available on the dial. There are also several case metals available. But what defines this watch isn't necessarily what's external, though that is incredibly grand and we will detail it. It's the fact that the watch seamlessly combines two time zones and a foolproof geographic style world time complication all into a deceptively simple interface. Now let's talk about fit first because fit comes first. The watch is large, there's no doubt. 44.2 millimeters across the round of the case does not include the crown or the trigger at 8 o'clock. It is however fairly slim. It will fit underneath the cuff. 13.6 millimeters with a generously domed sapphire and a rounded dome style bezel. From lug to lug the watch does shrink a little bit relative to expectations. 52.8 millimeters means I can wear it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist and as you can see it's seated securely. If the strap were sized down correctly and buckled into the proper aperture I would be able to wear this watch with comfort as well as physical security and a little bit of panache, though rose gold might be a bit much for me. It's probably perfect for those out there for whom colored gold is the only gold. Now the watch has a heft about it and that's because it is a large solid chunk of gold. Beautifully executed in rose gold with the simple welded on Breguet style lugs. It has a medium brown medium rectangular scale alligator leather strap with a monotone stitch. It's gently bolstered as it approaches the lugs but minimally. It's quite supple and flexible. There's a natural calfskin on the bottom and you can see Breguet offers a generous and fully finished deployant in matching rose gold. Now getting back to the case, you can see this is the modern Breguet design language. Pioneered during the 1980s by Daniel Roth, adopted wholesale by Invest Corp in the early 90s, and continued and refined in the era of Swatch ownership. It's simple and increasingly iconic as most folks recognize when they see the coined case flanks, the welded on straight shot lugs, the appearance almost of a pocket watch on the wrist, they know they're looking at Breguet. Of course the coined flanks are created by cold rolling the gold and then hand finishing. Similarly the welted on lugs, expensive and difficult to make, involve actually soldering the lug to the joint. So all of the excess material from the weld is removed to create this seamless and simple interface. There's also thoughtful ergonomics. As you'll note, there's a little bit of a kerf or a recession in the case behind the crown so you can easily dig your nail in, and that's true for both crowns. Moreover, because the lugs are very short and there's no constraint of the strap, you can easily pull it down around the tight curve of a small wrist. I believe you could still wear this fairly large complication on a wrist as small as 14 and a half to 15 centimeters in circumference. If you like the look of large, this watch fits comfortably. Now, polish. All of high polish, this is not a discreet watch by any measure, but the stakes raise on the dial. So everything about this dial is sensational. If the case is noticeable, this is a 1,000 watt dial designed to be seen and appreciated. Let's get a little bit closer. Before we talk about the complication, let's talk about what you're getting aesthetically. Okay, the dial base, solid gold. It is then rose lathe cut, that is guilloche, executed by a guilloche, an artisan who uses a rose engine to create the patterns that you see. For instance, the dimpled tracks outboard of the center dial and the form of the continents on the dial itself. Now there's more going on too because it's then silvered to create the aesthetic you see here with the stylized Breguet Roman numerals outboard of the lacquered center dial. There are the Breguet secret signatures, not so secret, but expected, between 11 and 12 and 12 and 1. And then you have the oversized heat blued, not chemically dyed, 
Breguet style hands at center. Easy to read. The contrast level is fairly high even though the hands are relatively spare. Now you have that beautiful gloss of the lacquer, the high polish of the continents. Africa and Europe also available in dial style as well as Asia. This is the North and South America edition. You also note that there is a freehand engraved cover to the Sun Moon combination that works as a day night indicator. There's a little image of a anthropomorphic cloud blowing a gust and then underneath there are hand engraved moon and sun discs on top of a lapis lazuli disc which is a beautiful gloss blue stone with flecks of metal inset. Now the dial itself contains a lot of information but you don't know the half of it or maybe you know exactly the half of it as there are two different time zones. Neither one visible while the other one is displayed. So here's how it works. There's an index at 6 o'clock that shows my current city. Let's say I'm on the east coast of the United States, Washington DC. I'm staying in Washington and New York is my reference city. 24 principal cities for 24 principal time zones. Now you can see right now it is the 10th in New York. But Let's say I want to jump on a private jet and go visit my friend Vlad in Moscow. Okay, well I press the trigger at 8 o'clock and it remembers the other time zone. Now I'm in Moscow. I'm on Moscow time. And note how Moscow, which is GMT plus three, jumps me ahead to the 11th. So not only does it remember the time of day and whether it's day or night, but it remembers the date. If you do happen to be jumping across the moving date line as you travel, this watch knows that. So how does all this work? Well, you can change your reference city at six o'clock by using the crown that cycles between the two retained times. So by changing the city, you pull the crown out and then you rotate. Here's La Paz, Rio de Janeiro. You see, just like a world time, you have those 24 cities for 24 time zones. Unlike a world time and rather like Jajero Lecoult's geographic system or Nomos's Zurich Weltzeit, you simply change the city and the watch does the math for you. Now, once you push the crown back in, you can cycle to your other reference city, pull the crown out, and change your reference city. Say I want to change to Helsinki. I can do that. But here's the thing. If I want to actually change the time, I pull out the standard crown. Now the standard setting crown does two things. First, it hacks the seconds hand. The caliber 77F0 in this watch does feature hacking seconds. So then I can change the time without changing the city. So this is how I set the time for the city itself. Push the crown back in. Now you see I can cycle between the cities again and select my city using the crown at 8 o'clock. So what's underpinning all of this technology? Well it is a beautifully finished and beautifully engineered manufacturer caliber. Of course La Magna, which was long a close affiliate of Breguet within Invest Corp and later the Swatch Group has officially become manufactured Breguet so all La Magna calibers are now branded as Breguet and Breguet has exclusive access to this caliber 77 F0 39 joules automatic winding it has a 55 hour power reserve as you saw hacking seconds it beats way at 28,800 vibrations per hour the 55 hour power reserve beating away at 4 hertz is metered by an escapement that is silicon. So the anchor is silicon and the escape wheel is silicon. But what is not silicon is actually the set of pallet stones. It still uses conventional lubricated synthetic ruby entry and exit stones. The hairspring, however, is silicon, endowing the watch with robust anti-magnetism. Now it is a beautifully finished movement. Actually, I was impressed by the degree of ambition. First, the rose lathe cut of the solid rose gold rotor is absolutely beautiful, a spectacular undulation rayon pattern. And then you'll note the Cote de Genève across the bridges. See how it starts dark and then thins out and lightens up on the opposite side? That's what a true abrasive wheel Cote de Genève looks like when you lay it down in the traditional fashion as opposed to stamping it. It should be ridged and textured with a gradient from one side to the other. You'll even find interior angles. The angolage is beautiful and you can see the edge of the bridge is lighting up mirrored and broad. You can actually appreciate the angolage without the benefit of a loop. But if you have a loop, check out the interior angles on the bridge just under my thumb. That is something you often see on only the most ambitiously finished movements and this watch certainly qualifies. All of the screw heads are black polished and you'll note as I turn the watch flush to the camera 
So too are the components of the regulator on the balance and the double screwed stud holder. Everything that turns black as I turn the watch flush to the camera is black polished and beautifully executed. There's more going on of course as there is perlage or a engine turned pattern across the base plate beneath the balance. But you'll also note that there are subsidiary springs including one that appears to be associated with a power letdown for the mainspring barrel. And if you look at the channels underneath these springs you can actually see perlage was applied there. A very tight micro prolage evenly spaced superb execution this is a beautiful movement this is a movement worthy of a watch that has a grand sense of occasion on the wrist and immense intellectual investment in its engineering this is the finest travel watch in existence well short of a loomed watch that might be its one Achilles heel it has no luminescence then again if you're traveling to Moscow on a private jet you can simply turn the light on see this watch by the light of day on our website